you know, I think there's a unique opportunity uh, for the Corps of Engineers that I've not seen in 30 or 40 years. And that opportunity is driven by uh, some of the past year's events or two year's events, and it's opened a door for change. It's opened a mindset shift, I think, in the Corps of Engineers and our team to look at things slightly differently because the world has changed, we all feel it. And so I'm an optimist, and I believe that as we all look and evaluate where we can have the greatest impact, we're less constrained by how we've done things in the past or how our systems are set up that historically met the nation's needs, but now may need to be modified. And so I'm encouraged by the opportunity where I believe change is more possible than what it's been in the past. And I see it in the mindset of all of the team, uh, leadership, all the way down to the folks that are delivering projects. They are willing, more than I've ever seen before, to look at new ways, consider different options, and really evaluate how we can best serve the nation. What I'd like to do is introduce a few of, introduce you to a few of our uh, teammates uh, who every day spend their time focusing on delivering the mission, partnering with others, and focusing on what's most important to meet the emergency management community practice goals. We have a huge portfolio of dams and rivers and, and levees and such, and our day-to-day -day is really making sure the communities are safe. You know, helping them help themselves to protect themselves, you know, to be more resilient in the end. And that's really what we bring. And, and working with the community is always a pleasure. My whole team is focused on just that. And once in a while, there is a hurricane that comes in and there are systems that come in and we work with FEMA to provide more assistance to the state under the Stafford Act authorities. So the Corps of Engineers has a lot of different missions, you know, a civil works mission, a military mission, MILCON mission, all kinds of construction. We build stuff, that's what the Corps of Engineers does. Um, and everything we do takes a lot of time and a lot of effort, and we help other agencies and all kinds of things. Emergency management is one of the few things that the Corps of Engineers does, that we actually get out and we work with the citizens of the United States. Specifically in my district, I work within seven different states and I can go out and I can individually affect people's lives every day by what I do. I think emergency management is important to the Corps of Engineers because it's one of the few things that we can do and we can actually get out and touch people's lives on a daily basis and have an instant impact. It doesn't take 15 or 20 years to do a study to go out and rehabilitate a levee or to go out and put on a temporary roof after a hurricane or to go out and, and help recover the debris after a hurricane. So I think that it's one of the things that the Corps of Engineers can do where we actually get out there, get our name out there, and make sure that folks know what we can do to support not the, only the nation but individuals. I think federal emergency management is very unique and I think we have challenges explaining what we do. I get asked so many times from regular private sector, other civilians, what does emergency management mean? I think in their heads they, they think ICS or what we call ICS and that um, local level response, that incident command, that really like setting up the first response. So I try to explain that we do a lot of planning, we do a lot of uh, recovery mostly, and a little bit of response thrown in there as well. And we're really that top tier level of support to the people that can't do it when they run out of the resources. So just really focusing in on a lot of our planning effort and what we do kind of in the off season, what our regular day-to-day -day lives look like, because I think a lot of people think we're not busy, but we're, we're busy all the time. We're planning, we're coming up with innovative ways to respond, we're responding, and we're recovering. Knowing that, that the team that I facilitate day-to-day -day is able to impact uh, our neighbors, our friends, our communities in such a positive way when their lives have been turned upside down. Nobody woke up in the morning and said, I want Hurricane Maria to hit my home, right? Nobody wakes up and says, I'm ready for that earthquake that's gonna come. Um, but we actually spend our days trying to be ready 
to put it back together afterwards. And that's something that I can feel good about and feel proud of, and I work with an amazing team. We've seen over the past uh, 10, 15 years or so, these, these events are just coming more and more. They're becoming uh, more and more frequent, more and more severe, and our business line has only been amped up by that. Um, we, we have to have somebody that is preparing, that is planning, and ultimately responding to, to these disasters as they're happening. It's important to know that we're always preparing, right? Whether that means writing a plan, uh, getting flood fight supplies, building relationships, um, exercising, going through each situation, we're always there. So this business line is a, is a line that makes sure that things are gonna go right as possible when a disaster happens. Uh, disaster is often uh, people's worst day of their lives. Right, they, they, they're going through something um, and we're, we're there to, to make sure it's as smooth as possible. It's never, never completely smooth. Um, we're learning every new disaster. Uh, we have to be a learning organization and, and change and adapt our plans and sometimes on the fly, right? It, it, a disaster happens and immediately something went wrong and you gotta go fix it. Um, I'd say this community is problem solvers, number one, right? It, it's solving a problem that needs to be solved not in six months time, it's all in an hour's worth of time. So uh, it's a great place for people that are forward thinking, that it can solve problems on the fly and implement those very quickly. It's not always a perfect solution, sometimes it's the 80% solution, but um, it's, it's just gotta be out there and something has to be done a lot of the time. So uh, it's a great place for uh, people to think on their feet and, and, and uh, implement solutions quickly. The biggest thing for me in the EM is I have, I, I'm providing value, right? I provide value to a person who is potentially impacted by a disaster. Uh, and that's, that's the biggest thing. I wake up in the morning wanting to help someone uh, be more resilient. Uh, I wake up in the morning wanting to prevent the impacts of disasters. Those are probably the two biggest things. You know, I really, I love what I do. Um, my grandfather always said, if you get to get a job that you love, you're a very small percentage of the population of the workforce. My job is like a hobby to me. Um, I'm a coastal Texan. I, I am from Galveston, elementary school all the way to my master's degree. Knowing that I, a category four hurricane could be staring Corpus Christi in the face, I have the skill set that, that the Corps provided me to be able to make sure that we can put those pieces back together quickly and ensure uh, the economy of, of this great nation that we live in. So it, it's vital to me and I'm so passionate about it. I'm excited about the people that we have on our team. I'm excited about our mission. Uh, this introduction uh, to a few of our teammates uh, hopefully will help you help us continue to focus on the future.